my sexy Dexter fans. Welcome to my third official Dexter Season 8 news vlog. So for those of you who are new to the scene, my name is Emily Sophia and I'm going to be breaking down for you, the lovely customer, some of the latest and greatest news about this upcoming season of Dexter because if you're anything like me, then you are mostly peeing yourself 90% of the time thinking, dear God, what is going to happen in season eight so <laughs> that's my life it's my life i swear and so uh spoiler alert for those of you who don't want to know anything about season eight i don't know why you would be watching this video if that was the case but if it is then i would suggest that you go elsewhere because there are some major things that we are going to discuss tonight um there are a couple topics that i'm mostly going to focus on um yeah so i said my spoiler alert so if you don't want to know anything about next season, then please don't be here as much as I want to get to know you. We'll, we'll talk later. Anyways, so, two things. Um, number one, the uh, second official teaser for season eight, I think it's called The Full Picture. So I'll break that down for you guys. I mean, it's only like 40 seconds, so it's kind of, it kind of breaks down itself, but I guess I'll talk about it. And number two, there is a certain um, very polarizing returning character who is coming back to season eight. And that would be, drum roll please, the one and only Hannah McKay, portrayed by Yvonne Strahovski. So <laughs> I will make you wait um, for my full discussion of what I think of that scenario, what I hope will um, come from her returning. Um, we currently know that she's going to be back for a multi-episode arc. I think that they're about to, um, at the time of me filming this video, I think that they're going to be filming se uh, season six, um, episode 6 soon, or episode 7 even? I don't know. I've been kind of in the vortex of school and college madness, so <laughs> I'm trying to keep up on everything for you guys. So, I will talk about those things. I do have some very strong feelings, but I want to tell you guys Number one, I love you a lot. And number two, if we respect where each other is coming from, you as the viewer, hearing me out on my, my rants and raves, and I as the video maker slash responder to your comments, I will be more than happy to hear you out. Um, I'm just saying that let's let us love each other and agree to disagree if we have to <laughs> but there's something about Hannah McKay where you know there's really just not much of a middle ground so we'll talk about that just realize I'm wearing a lot I'm wearing a lot of red tonight and uh, in blue as well I feel kind of kind of pretty patriotic tonight. <laughs> red is the color of passion, um, la passion, so I'm going to deliver that to you tonight. So, here we go. I'm going to break everything down for you. All of the links about what I'm discussing are in the description, and I have some fun channel updates, so stick around, and I hope that this won't be 12 hours, because I would probably be dead, because I haven't had dinner yet. <laughs> all right, so, first of all, um, Marvel as in Marvel Comics, and Jeff Lindsay, the original author of Darkly Dreaming Dexter and the Dexter series upon which the show is based, they're going to be releasing a comic book series this July. So, for those of you who enjoy comic lore and Marvel and Dexter and all that good stuff, then you might want to check it out because it's coming soon. And um, I will tell you this much, I'm, I'm guessing that the Dexter of the comics is going to be more like the Dexter of Lindsay's novels, and I've read only three of them because, to be to be quite honest with you, I I much prefer the TV show to the novels. Um, the first book follows pretty closely with actually the events of the first season of Dexter, but the rest it's it's a very different character and. You know, not everyone who likes the show likes the books and vice versa, and I kind of enjoy both for different reasons, but you know, just just a heads up, it's gonna be very different from what you might anticipate, so there's that. I'm sitting like, I'm seriously squatting right now. I don't know what's wrong with me and why I can't sit normally <laughs> right now. I don't understand, so okay, I'm going to try to like be, yes, okay. There's that. So let me know what you guys think if you're excited for the comics or not. All right, moving on to my next topic. So 
There have been a slew of new set photos from season 8 that have been surfacing in Twitter land and all across the internet. So, um, spoiler alert for these, I mean, I, I seriously, I feel like you have to go through all these, like, passageways, okay, here's spoilers and more spoilers, I just, I don't want to step on anybody's toes, I just, that's not my goal here, so... What I'm going to tell you is that I'm going to be talking about a lot of um, set photos that are all from the uh, the filming for Season 8, Episode 4. And what is that episode? I think it's called Scar Tissue. Yes, yes. So all the links for the pictures are below in the description, so go look them up as I discuss or whatever else you need to do. But they do reveal a certain event that is going to happen in that episode. So if you don't want to know anything, then I'll make an annotation and tell you when to skip to in the video so you can, so we can get back to other things. Anyway, there um, in the very first link that you'll see in my description that is related to the scar tissue photos, as you will see, there is a certain vehicle that has landed in a lake or a very large pond. And we see Dexter and Deborah, Michael C. Hall and Jennifer Carpenter, coming out of the water. Like they have their clothes are soaking wet. We got towels. <laughs> so we can only assume that means one thing. And uh, I'll let you let you take a peek at those. <laughs> um, basically, they get in a car accident, and they land in a lake. And so, in the next link that um, is looking at the scar tissue photos, we see so we see Dexter and Deborah, and we've got all of the fun equipment, and the car is in the water, and we see it actually it's going off of a ramp over this truck, and. So it'll be really interesting to see, you know, all this unfolding in context. I'm not, I'm not too disappointed that, you know, we saw these photos. It's kind of, kind of exciting, you know, we'll have to see like what exactly is going on, if there's some wild car chase or what's going on. So yeah, we see a lot of photos of kind of the progress of filming this madness. And Michael C. Hall and Jennifer Carpenter, in some scenes they're dry, in some scenes they are very moist, probably had a lot of fun <laughs> trekking through the swamp and like their jeans and stuff. And we see that um, Deborah is standing over Dexter as he is lying on the, uh, the shoreline. So you know what that might mean is there could be a little bit of CPR action. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. <laughs> so, not that that is necessarily going to be romantic or anything, but there's potential that there's gonna be some mouth-to-mouth -mouth resuscitation going on. So, that is all I'm gonna say there. Yeah, so, and we, we see them also coming out of the water and trying to, to make their weary way back to the shore. And then there's one more link. I think that there, yeah, there's one more. So we see that uh, Deborah is kind of holding Dexter and he's starting to sit up. So they might have just finished uh, filming the scene where she restores him to life and vitality. So he's, because it looks like he's kind of laughing that or he's trying to like exert himself and actually sit back up. So... Yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see all this unfold, you know, what do you guys imagine the context might be or how the scene might go down, how it might change the relational dynamics between the dynamic duo of Dexter and Deb. That was a hell of a lot of alliteration. I am so sorry about that. <laughs> so yeah, let me know what you guys think. I mean, there's only so much that we can guess at this point in time and I'm not going to say too much more because there's way more to be talking about. So, uh, the next thing also, by the way, follow the crap out of Jennifer Carpenter on Twitter. I have said this before in some of my previous vlogs, but she is, she is freaking hilarious. She is just a diamond in the rough. So go, go follow her, go find her. And she, she tweeted a photo, uh, from the set of the fourth episode, Scar Tissue, and she's, and she's all like spread eagle on the ground like I can't I can't really do this like from where I am but it's kind of like hey and she's she's all soaking wet probably having just gotten out of the, the swamp and the tweet says took a break from shooting Dexter the other day to shoot an ad for my new fragrance ponder out never so dumb I love that woman I might marry her someday so uh don't try to beat me to it because I will fight you at any rate, so 
Next course of business, um, season eight, episode six, the new title has been launched and it is called A Little Reflection. So that could mean, that could mean a lot of things. It could be Deborah taking a little further time to reflect on further events that we don't know about yet. <laughs> if that isn't vague, then I don't know what it is. Um, it could be Dexter, oh God. I mean, there, there's really no, there's really no way that I can speculate any further than than this, and I just I can't really get much deeper than where we're at right now. So, leave your thoughts as to what you think that could possibly mean if you have any kind of a psychic knowledge, because I'd be curious. So there's that. There's that. There's there will be a lot to reflect on this season, I'm sure, between the the harrowing action and the emotional intensities that will inevitably ensue. So there's that. Okay, and now I will officially address this, um, the second teaser for Dexter Season 8. And again, these are just tiny little tidbits. They're just kind of, you know, sort of like throwing pretzels at like the polar bear in the zoo, like just kind of entertain him. I don't, I don't think the polar bears would eat pretzels. In fact, it probably would piss him off. So <laughs> if you guys have seen this, uh, this little teaser, I hope it didn't piss you off. But uh, there is a link below as well as an annotation here so you guys can go watch that in case you haven't. It is called The Full Picture and I will, and just to refresh your memory, I will read for you the uh, the transcript and basically it is, uh, it's a little Dexter thought monologue kind of thing going on and we start off with this sort of image of blood, you know, set against that stark bright snow white and uh, and the camera is kind of panning out, and we see that um, we we see that the picture there is some picture that's coming into focus, you know, kind of symbolic. And in the end, it turns out that it is uh, some artwork. It is a portrait of Dexter's face, written in blood. Well, not written, but made in blood. Something of that nature. <laughs> yeah. So, and basically, what he says is this. I've always been a very neat monster, but lately the truth has begun to spill and too many people have seen the full picture. I'm losing control. And the only thing I know for sure is that it isn't going to be pretty. So sorry that my voice isn't Michael C. Hall's. I'd only wish that would actually kind of be kind of a problem for me potentially, but he has a, he has a rather divine voice. I could listen, you know, he and Morgan Freeman should just I'd, I'd listen to them just like have a coffee chat. I'd do it. So, you know, again, that doesn't really tell us too much, but you know, it reiterates what we have seen over the course of all these seasons that Dexter is becoming more and more exposed and increasingly vulnerable in terms of, you know, more people finding out about him and him finding out about what it is to truly be human as well. So it's kind of this, this interchange, if you will, so, you know, I think that that kind of embodies, you know, the general sense that we might, you know, expect to get from this next season in terms of themes, you know, just that, that vulnerability factor is going to be amped the hell up. So we will, we will be looking to see what exactly all that means. I'm, I'm very excited and it's probably not going to be pretty, but usually what that means is that it is going to be intense and exciting and riveting. So we've got lots of, uh, fun to look forward to in these upcoming months. So, fun, fun, fun. All right, and then, oh yes, I have another little um, Twitter clip of, uh, from the filming of season eight, episode four, Scar Tissue. So yet again, from the, the fun in Pond Land, uh, we see some, some stuff that Jennifer Carpenter has tweeted out. And there's a there's a fun picture of her and uh, Jennifer Carpenter and Michael C. Hall. They're in the water, and she is uh, she's flipping the bird. So just <laughs> pretty much perfect. I I love I love Michael C. Hall and Jennifer Carpenter just as people, as friends, as anything and everything under the sun. Theirs is a very cool connection, and that really translates into the characters of Dexter and Deborah for me. So very satisfying stuff. All right, I'm, I'm promised that I'm getting to the big discussion that probably all of you want to hash out with me, so we'll work on that. Gosh, I'm still sitting like 
I don't know. This is the first time I've done a vlog like this. It's so weird. All right. Um, other than that, also there have been some set photos released for the premiere episode of the season, which is, as of right now, it is not titled. So we're gonna have to we're gonna have to see about that. But um, it would appear that well, there's a crime scene. What up? And then also, Dexter appears to be in a beautiful yellow soccer uniform of some kind. I think that what what it looks like is there's also a picture where there's a little girl that's also wearing a yellow jersey and so I think that Dexter might be volunteering for maybe Harrison's soccer team or something and you know and revolving around these pictures there's a concern of a time skip happening between um, the end of season seven and the beginning of season eight and I completely understand the concerns related with that, but I think that I think that we should trust the writers enough to know that they're not going to skirt over, you know, all the insanity that happened in the aftermath of LaGuardia's death. They're not going to skip over that. They're not going to not show what is, you know, what all happened and how things have changed between Dexter and Deborah and just everything in Miami Metro. It's, you know. I think that they're, they were bold enough to, you know, finally get Deborah to see the truth about Dexter, so I think, you know, I think suffice it to say, they're going to fill us in and just all the crazy details, and I don't think that they're going to leave us in the dark about that, so I wouldn't worry about that too much. I would not. I think, you know, and they they use dream and flashback and just all kinds of mediums to to really fill in those blanks and just give us the bigger picture. So, all right, it is time to talk about the favorite thing in the world for Dexter fans to talk about. And, oh, my hair is like falling in the face. Yvonne Strahovski slash Hannah McKay is returning to the scene for what is described as a multi-episode arc. La la la, Hannah became Dexter's twisted love interest and a major thorn in his side. Hannah's escaped from prison and mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, she is back. She is indeed back. And there is also, um, I also posted a link at the very, way, way down in the description of a little uh, Twitter interview that was held with Yvonne Strahovski about the return of Hannah on Dexter and some other kind of semi-related topics. And um, what she says is she knew for a long time that Hannah was going to be coming back and she was bursting to tell people. Um, the uh, question, one of the questions that was asked her was, do you want Hannah to be killed or survive the season? And she says, I simply can't decide. Both op or can't read. Both wood options are good. I am Ivan Srahovsky, no can talk. <laughs> That's what it says there. So dramatic death versus living. Let's vote triple winky face. Wow, that's pretty seductive, Yvonne. And um, so they ask, can you give us an idea of why your character comes back into Dexter's life? And she says, yes, she is coming back to shake things up for Dexter a little, just to add to the turmoil. Smiley face. So, to add to the turmoil, what exactly does that imply? Now, I will, I will tell you this. I will, I will say this and send this off into the world and you can do what you please with it and you can disagree with me and you can hate me for all eternity. That's fine, I guess. Although, I'd like to be your friend via the internet. So, <laughs> I was not a big fan of Hannah at all. I'm, I'm just gonna be open with you. I love Yvonne Strahovski as an actress and I think that she does perfectly, you know, for the character of Hannah, you know, she portrays her well. It is not, it is, you know, the the grips, <laughs> just the issues that I have with Hannah are not related to Yvonne Strahovski as an actress and her portrayal of her. She is, she is divine, she is lovely, and I like her a lot. She's very cool. However, Hannah McKay is, I, I don't like who Dexter became in her company. I don't like the way that she was really thrust into the scene, you know, how Dexter last season all of a sudden it was just, he was fixated on her, like, I'm so stressed about everything that's going on, I have to kill her, she is the one, well, I guess I'll ask her out on a date because that's the only way I'm going to get to kill her, and, uh, you know, it just, that storyline never, 
never won my heart and soul over personally. I think that she served as a very interesting catalyst of change for Dexter as a person. You know, it was kind of being with her was what made Dexter realize, you know, what the dark passenger really is and that it is, you know, it's really just a, his way of kind of defaulting, you know, what he has done onto some other some other entity, something else that takes the blame away from him and that keeps him in, you know, his, his cold, emotionless, calculating, like, I got this kind of state. So it was very interesting to see him, you know, really explore that realm and, you know, the fact that he's owning his kills and he, he feels and, but for me personally, the, you know, the entry of Hannah felt more contrived than anything else and I was really relishing the Dexter and Deborah dynamics that were happening in the season and while I personally am okay with the Dexter and Deborah relationship on any level that the writers want to take it to if you have any questions about that I'll gladly respond to them in the comments um, so you know I was really enjoying the way that the writers were really digging into that and just the way that things were, were changing with them and it was so freaking cool just their their chemistry was was on fire I mean just in terms of not even in terms of romance like I, I have said this and this will upset some I, I get it but I gotta put it out there I would rather there be no romance next season than for Dexter to fall head over heels for Hannah again and just for them to become intertwined again because I think that that particular journey ran its course last season and it would just mm, there's so much else that they can do and need to do this season and I can see why you know I think that Hannah's storyline deserves to be resolved and it's interesting you know that instead of just killing off a character within a season you know they're they're bringing it into two seasons I think that's really cool that that's fine by me um it's just that oh I just I just hope and pray that they really you know the the screen time that Hannah gets will be worthwhile and that she'll just be used well and I I really want to see Dexter and Deborah hash out a lot this season especially in light of where they were left off last time and there's just there's just so, so much that I want to see done with them, and I don't want the re-entry of Hannah to suddenly just cut that off, you know? I think that she can be brought in in such a way as to not interrupt the plot, to kind of enrich it, and you know, like Yvonne said, to kind of boost the turmoil level a little bit, <laughs> if it needs to be. But, you know, I had, I had a revelation today, actually. And uh, do you guys remember season four when Dexter was after, um, I believe her name was Zoe Kruger. Correct me if I'm wrong, I think that Zoe is at least the first name. Um, it was that, that lady cop who killed her family. And you know, I actually realized that I kind of anticipated that his, you know, sort of pursuit of Hannah was going to go the same way. And then it was as though, you know, think of what would have happened if they had brought you know, if they'd brought some kind of romance story out of the, the Dexter, Zoe kind of game that was going on, you know? And I think that's why it felt so strange for me, because Dexter is not, he's not all about the kinky table sex and the weird conversations and just, it's just not Dexter. I can completely understand him, you know, really coming to grips with his humanity and like, you know, realizing that there is a heart inside of him and it is beating and not everything is black and white, like he said in Deborah's dream, which was actually Deborah's subconscious putting words in his mouth. But anyways, I can I can understand that, but it was just, ugh, I just I just prefer I prefer that cold and calculating Dexter over the the woozy head over heels for uh, you know Monsterhofsky for for Hen McKay. Um, that's that's just me. That's just me, and that's the way that's what I bring to the show um, in terms of being a viewer and what I desire to see from it. So I understand, I understand Hannah, I do, but I just, I, I just hope they do it well. That's all I gotta say. So please let me know what you guys think. Are you excited for her return or dreading it or just kind of in the place where I am where it's like, okay, I'll take it, just do something good. Make me happy. <laughs> yeah, so 
yeah, so that's kind of where I currently stand about all of this madness. Um, just, I, you know, I could foresee Hannah is, you know, she's she's got a vengeance about her, that's for sure. The question is whether or not that's going to turn into more wild, kinky sex and ridiculousness in Deborah getting completely sidelined and screwed over. <laughs> um, gosh, yeah, that's that was just so difficult for me to bear through with last season was just seeing her getting completely left in the dust and just Dexter's inability or you know just un like his his unwillingness to really just just care for her and the place where she was just sacrificing for him so much and it was really devastating to see that and I know that some people are like well, are we absolutely sure? Like, what if we find out that Deborah actually did, like, poison her own water and et cetera, et cetera? I think that's done. I, I really don't think that they're going to go back into that. I think, you know, to carry over an aspect of the plot like that from one season to another, it just doesn't seem, you know, it seems like this is the time for new material and new explorations. And, you know, I think there will be some kind of cat and mouse chasing and some, you know, some pizzazz to go in there. So I'm staying optimistic and I think that she really can be useful. It's just, and I'll be honest, I hope that her character is dealt with before the end game simply because I want to see the characters that have been there all this time really getting the screen time and just the time of the story and that that's just what I want. That's what I want. Is Hannah came in a little bit later in the game and I think that she's a good catalyst but that there's just so much else to be seen for the big smashing finale so that's where I stand and like I said you guys can more than disagree with me if you're throwing tomatoes at your screen right now I, I can't see it and uh, that's probably not good for your screen you're gonna wanna clean that up so <laughs> so thank you so much for watching and um, I will Stay in touch with you about all of the news that is coming into the scene with Dexter. So, anyways, um, what else? I am looking to do way more music on my channel. I'm almost done with my my um, junior year of college, so that's kind of crazy. And I'll be doing a lot more videoing this summer, so you guys can expect a lot from my channel. Um, this Sunday, actually, I'm going to be doing a podcast with Alexander Gray, and he uh, he does his own podcasts and reviews and fun stuff on his website, um, hangingoutcast.com. So I will keep you guys posted about that. Um, I'll be posting links to that podcast after it's uh, filmed and recorded and all that good stuff um, on my Twitter and to my Facebook page and maybe even my Tumblr. We'll see. And speaking of which, you can follow me on all of those places and chat with me. I try to make myself as available as possible to you guys for, for talking about this madness. So I don't know how long <laughs> this vlog is gone. I'm sorry. But I'm proud of myself because I was actually sitting normal for a while. And now I'm not. But I don't care because I am a rebel like that. So thank you so much for watching and all of your, woohoo, all of the support um, as I destroy my bedroom. Um, yeah, the channel is super close to 100,000 views total and we've gone well past 1,000 subscribers as well, which is crazy cool. I am just so maddeningly blessed and overwhelmed by your support and love. And you guys, like, you guys have been... I have this one follower, his name is Tyler, and he is sending me Dexter t-shirts just because he loves these reviews. And so next time that I film a vlog, it's it's gonna be in some, some... I almost said swazzy. I don't even know what that word is. Snazzy, I think? I think that's it some snazzy new Dexter attire, so I'm really excited to further extend my wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> you guys are so kind, and I love you. I love you so much. Okay, my camera is dying, so I've got to go love you. Bye, and I will be back in a gif with some more news and new reviews. Everything is going to be great and fun, so take care, you all, and thank you for your incredible love. I feel it from afar.